Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaiah from The Automator, and a little while ago, earlier today, we were on a hero call, and in birth, first, before I go forward, like, we still, we have a discount now where it's a buck ninety nine for the first month. Give it a try. Trust me, you will love it. It's a phenomenal deal. Um, saves you a lot of time, and you'll learn a lot of great stuff, one of which, which I learned, was Isaiah mentioned um, one of the Tickby libraries for D V2 code. So V1's been around forever, right, quite a while. Last year, last December-ish, V2 became the official version of AutoHotKey. And one of the arguments of people are like, I don't want to switch to V2 because there's so much in V1 and not much is in V2, So, which is sort of true. But we did want to point out, here are some great libraries out there in V2 that if you want to be using, right, a lot of people don't know where they are. So we thought we'd jump into them here. So there's your usual suspects, like just go into GitHub, the, you know, AutoHotKey, and you might find some very important things in here that you know for auto hotkey for our hotkey the exe the converter the converter like the compiler and other things in here the documentation and so on but um mainly if we go here to lexico's uh, uh github's account you will find 21 repositories and this is uh interesting because he for certain things that he does for himself he then later on Publish that and we can use it. Like this debug bars.ahk file, it is yeah. very similar to the end function you had, Joe, like yeah. uh, the one from Maestrid. It does right. basically the same. You pass it a variable and it just creates this visual representation on them. Um, but other things, he has some scripts like the gestures and so on, and other uh, interesting libraries. One of the most important ones is this WinRT library. And there was another one, the, J, the JavaScript, the Active Script, this one here. So the Active Script and the WinRT are two libraries that allow you to connect to other languages in a very, very cool thing, in a very cool way in AutoHotKey. Specifically, Active Script, that one I'm blown away with what you can do. Like you can run Visual Basic Script and JScript in your AutoHotKey code natively. That's insane. This one connects to the Windows runtime, which means you have access to everything Windows can do natively in AutoHotKey. And I was like, holy crap, that's insane. It's just too much. It's a, it's a, it's a steep learning curve. I have to take time just for that, and I'm, I haven't got the time. But this is a must. If you're doing something, if you know C Sharp, this WinRT library is a, it's just like, holy crap, everything you do in C Sharp, you could do in AutoHotKey as well. So that's part of what those are. But to go back to what you said, like um, Tickby, this guy in particular, he is well known for actually just, he has a group of repositories. And um, as you can see, for example, this one, this is the uh, hotkey extension for, v, for VS Code. And he's always active on that thing. I don't know how he, he doesn't stop. He's there all the time. So this extension is great. That's what we use. But I just mentioned to um, uh, Joe, and actually it wasn't a hero call. Hey, he has a library repository of very cool libraries that if you are looking for something to work with and you need that specific functionality, hey, just use this. For example, the json.hk uh, library, I use it because it's extremely great it, it, it is um it doesn't break like i've used it and i have never actually had a complaint he did fix something last week every time he just mentioned something to it he, he just goes ahead and fix it right away i don't know how he has the time so this is a library that i use um but if you look at this he has a library for working with base 64 things he has a gdi plus library i don't know how big that is i don't know how if he has all the functions available, I'm not really sure. And he usually works with um, objects. So it's not really simply like a, a bunch of functions and that's it. It's kind of like a class. If we go to the top, he creates the GDI class. And now you can say GDI startup or GDI shutdown and all of those other things. So he, he seemed to have done a big job with this. And it is for V2. So if you need a GDI uh, library for V2, I would definitely start with these guys because most of the times he's very thorough 
And as it, just by scrolling at it, it looks like he has most of the functions already pan out or a very big chunk of them. And they're really fast. If you're looking at this part in here, he is actually writing something in C++, converting it to machine code, putting the machine code here, and later on just calling the machine code, which is extremely fast. It's not something like Auto Hotkey cannot achieve that speed. So that's the reason why I would go ahead and use his libraries first. One caveat though, most of the time what he does, I don't like this, but he does this, is that his class depends on another of his classes. Mm -hmm. He has the um, Combar, I think, not this one. I had that issue with um, the web view. Mm -hmm. The web view control here, when you try to use it, part of what it does is that you will see it later. He has an include somewhere of the combar uh, thing. I don't know where it is. I know it's there because I I, I have the issue. Oh, here it is. is. Include include combar here. Oh. The point is he has that file in his library. He right. he's Good. mentioning something. It's very likely that he has it right there. So you will have to download both, and then it works. I was going to say it's 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 usually available. It's just not packed with it, right? So right, <laughs> you need to go in an additional step. Make sure you get all your stuff. Well, in this case, if you go to the library folder here, you just click download here, and it downloads everything, yep. which is not what I usually do. What I come here, I say, hey, I just right. want the web view, but then I have to remind myself, oh well, web right. view depends on something else, so I have to download that too. In your case, if you download the zip file itself, you don't have to worry about it because you have everything there, right? So, but many interesting things. I saw that he saw he has an audio driver. I don't know what it is. So it is the audio APIs, and it looks like you can do interesting stuff with it. But the second caveat with his stuff, they are really complicated. And I'm telling you, like people who have you know, um, uh, extent, uh, like experience with auto hotkey might even find those a little bit confusing, especially if something goes wrong. It's going to be a little bit hard to fix if you don't know what he's doing, right? So, and he's doing very high level stuff that some people might find it very complicated and just not go with it. So depending on your level, you might not want to do this uh, library if you need to fix some stuff. But on the other hand, I rarely need to fix anything with it because it's really good at um, what it does. Uh, he has some APIs, software packaging for monitoring and instrumenting API calls on Windows, whatever that means. I've never done that, right? So I don't know what that is, but it's very likely that if you're doing um, certain type of programming that needs that with B tours, he has a library for that. Native here, it's really interesting because it allows you to grab a DLL and call it inside your auto hotkey code as if it was auto hotkey code. I don't know how to really explain that. It makes the functions available in that library oh. as if they were auto hotkey code themselves. And that is another thing for the web view depends on the native component as well. So those kind of things. Um, I haven't, read, uh, I haven't used uh, many of those libraries, but some of them, like for example, the wing capture, I would have, I, I assume it is for, yeah, taking screenshots and stuff like that and dealing with pictures. You know what, Joe, uh, now that I'm looking at this, it says DH, DXGI and the WM, <laughs> the DWM, those are the different ways that you can capture um, images from the screen. Maybe we should give this a try and see if it works with the program that we have troubles with. Well, we're, we're, we're looking, we're looking at from, yeah, but we're looking at one from Spanova right now. To, which right, should, for example, those, those are the ways, but I just realized, hey, you should give this one a try if that one doesn't work. Perfect. So again, it's good to know that those libraries are there. Just go to their GitHub profiles. Um, we're going to probably link on them, but let's go and move to another person. Like Descalada is also working a lot with very cool stuff, specifically the one that he's uh, working the most with 
is the UIA uh, V2 library, this um, automation library for V2. And uh, we were fortunate to talk to him about it and um, chime in some ideas. And um, he was very receptive. And we are really happy to use this library because it feels so intuitive. So as we talked to him about it, um, it became really cool. Uh, and he himself has a list of libraries that he probably uses, probably a collection of libraries that he found all over and all the place and then just modified, like, for example, the OCR library, um, DPI tutorials, um, and other things. So if you, if you are looking for libraries, then go ahead and jump in, look at those. These, there are some libraries, like the array libraries um, and map libraries, which I see here, they're probably deprecated because Arahaki V2 now make them, um, uh, how do I say, native to it. But for example, this string one, when I look at it, it allows you to do very cool stuff with a string that Arahaki doesn't do natively, like checking if it is a digit, checking if it is alphanumeric, just with dot notation, right? So just imagine that you have a string like yellow here, right? So you put color there. And then I could say color, that is number. That's what he's doing. He's, he's, he's adding this functionality to a string type of variable, which is not there yet. The only thing that I noticed is, oh, there you go. I was just going to mention that. He cannot use right. the word string to create them, right? So you would have to use uh, a string two to create those kind of things, right? So just after you have, after you create that, you say color equals string to, and now you can say, hey, color value, I don't know how the, he does this, yellow. But now you have access to all the things that I just mentioned, like color is is number, for example, and those kind of things. So it is really cool what you can do with it, but it's, it, it makes me write code in a way that I'm not used to. And that's why I don't usually use those. But at some point, hopefully, this will become native to AutoHotKey, yeah, and probably awesome. I will be able to just say, hey, just just uh, give me to uppercase or convert it to lowercase or make it title modes. You know, those kind of things are really cool, especially the splitting. This is so cool. You just grab a string, split it whether you want without having to call an additional function for that. When I was learning Python, you can slice and like it is right. <laughs> what you can do. It's crazy. And right. I was of that. I'll say that. They got that. Like, wow. Oh, anyway. look at this. Split path from a string that gives you the file name, the directory, the no. extension. You remember what we were talking about? Right? So it's no. really cool. Um, we looked at Gigdud's uh, repositories. We noticed that he's coding in other languages um, as well. So not everything is out of hockey, what we got. And he's focused on certain um, tools like Code Quick Tester, which is very similar to what I just opened here, which is kind of like an editor, a quick editor that you can run code from it. I think his is just focused on that. Mine is just a combination of many things. So. Uh, mine is not really good at what it does. It does many things at the same time. His is just focused on that. So I would recommend you giving it a try. But he has this rich code wrapper, which is really cool because the rich control, the rich edit control allows you to do coloring and highlighting and so on. And he has a class that allows you to create and do other things with it very easily which we don't have natively in our hotkey yet. So if you need to, and I would definitely suggest playing with rich edit controls, if you need to work with those, um, you will need this type of libraries. There are, there's another one out there. I don't know who created it, but that's the one that I was giving it a go. I didn't know that there was a version here. Oh, yeah, he has a V2 version now, so probably we will need to give it a go and test it as well. In his case, I, again, I don't know if he has many libraries. He has 74 repositories. Many of them are um, out of hotkey code. The Neutron HK, that's insanely cool. Like yeah. You can create HTML GUIs with out of hotkey and stuff like that. He's working with Cloud AHK, which is an insane project, by the way. Um, WebSockets and many other interesting 
tools. He also has the WebView 2 control. I haven't tested it yet. I found TickBeats um, well, first, so I haven't no. tested it. Right. And um, But, you know, if you have time and you're looking for libraries, I definitely go ahead and take a look at this. Look at this, discord.ahk. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Right, bots in our hotkey? Yeah, that, that would be great. If you have a Discord channel, you want to automate it, but yeah, you can do so in our hotkey if you want to. <laughs> now, if you move to somebody that is doing a very, very specialized thing, Shin here, or Spinovas, he's creating, he's creating a library that is geared only to dealing with images and image search, and very specifically, for gaming. So he allows you to search images very quickly well, on a game. Yeah. I was going to say, because it's actually reading like in the memory, right? It's, it's, it's crazy fast. And right. if I remember right. The, it doesn't even have to be visible. That's why it's right. like, yeah, it's, it's really, it doesn't have to be visible because of what I mentioned before. Like right. he's connecting to the direct to D version of it. Right. Not the G is he's not connecting to the software like Windows, he's right. connecting to the graphics memory card, card the yeah. graphics card. He's yeah. connecting directly, he's using the graphics card to do whatever he's doing, which is insanely fast and is really good. Actually, you're doing that would be the fastest you can get, really. So um, if you're looking for image scanning, overlays, or connecting to games and finding things. These libraries are, I, I wouldn't recommend anything else. And we're going to use this class in another software that we're having troubles getting information out of and probably connecting to the images directly to the graphics card might help in this case. So he, he's, yeah. been, he's been on our channel a couple of times. He also has his own YouTube channel. So if you search for Spanova and AutoHotKey and YouTube, you'll, you'll find him. And he, he does great, great stuff. Right. Uh, talking about YouTube, we have this uh, person, Axel Fogler. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know how to say the name. Right. <laughs> and uh, when we came here, we saw a lot of repositories, but most of them in different languages, Python, Lua, uh, Rust, and so on. But we did find some auto hockey code out there. Um, and specifically, I saw this lib v2, which is a repository that contains a few um, libraries that seem to be useful. This probably has to do with screen extens uh, screen libraries, loaders, extensions, directives, converters. So if you're looking for some of those, just go ahead and take a look at that. Daytime converters for AutoHotKey V2 specifically. Uh, now, what I saw is that uh, this was marked as not maintained any longer. So when I go back to the uh, list in here, it just says not maintained anymore. And the last code we saw was nine months ago. So I don't know if it is completely outdated, but probably soon it's going to be uh, in a state that AutoHotKey might have changed so much that it might not work. So just keep that in mind. The next two are just people that we have seen on the forums doing amazing stuff. These guys are really advanced. Um, I don't even know how to say his name. Dan I C M. I don't know. You need <laughs> I don't know. But the point is, he does very, very advanced stuff in our hotkey, as far as I remember. Yeah. Um, and um, very interesting. Uh, an application that never stores passwords, for example. And he has very cool applications. NVIDIA API. Holy crap, that's insane. Right? Uh, so... Hash calculators, um, win APIs, DLL calls, probably wrappers to make them easy, export DLL files. So that, that's interesting. I will take a look at this one. So I will give it a DLL file and it would tell me what the functions are. That would be interesting, right? So, Letters, right. Because right. they're basically um, a black box, right? And like you, you don't know. Most of the times they are, yeah. So again, this is very interesting. FTP classes. Hey, look at that. You have you need to do FTP things with your script or your program. Hey, you have a class that probably makes it easy for you. So very cool. HK Process Explorer or Task Manager, memory information, text converter. That's very interesting. And Isa Hound is also, I think he's German, is another person who is, I, I consider really advanced. And when I look when I looked at the first one here, which had to do with image put, um, 
you can give it a lot of types of images and convert them and react to them and so on. Some types of images, AutoHotKey cannot read directly. So it seems to me that he has a script that you can give it almost any type of images and AutoHotKey would be able to handle it and convert it to different versions. So it might be a very good library for your use case if you want. And it is, he has been active recently. So uh, just take a little time and look at them if you want. All right, so that's just, uh, you know, you can always, Google's your friend too, right? But um, it is sometimes a pain to try to track down whether it's V1 or V2, and it's going to be that way for a while, but hopefully people will get better about actually titling their script or something, the library that it's yeah. V2, so it's a little simpler. But right. Thanks for watching. Um, please like the video if you learned something. really helps us out. And uh, consider joining the Hero Call. Like I said, we talked about some of these things during the Hero Call and we have three hours a week. It's a great deal. And plus, there's our Telegram group where if you join, you can ask questions during the week and get some light support. So awesome. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye.